Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Anton off to as usual and today I've got another World of Tanks tutorial lined up for you guys. I haven't done one of these for quite a while now. And today we'll be talking about armor penetration, armor angling and some tips and tricks how you can maximize your efficiency on the battlefield. Now this first little uh, training room game I'm going to show you here is going to showcase armor angling and the stuff I'm going to show in this game is quite basic so if you already know the game quite well and how it works and know about the mechanics and so on you might not be interested in this tutorial because it's more interesting for new players who do not yet fully understand how the game actually works. Now. Before we get stuck in, I just want to quickly point one thing out that some of you might not realise and uh, might ask in the comments, so I want to get out of the way uh, right at the beginning, and that is uh, if you go to your settings window and go to rectangle, you can actually down here in the gun marker uh, thing, you can adjust what kind of rectangle you want to have. and there are many options where you can have a rectangle with armor penetration indicator and that is a really really useful thing because what it basically does is if you will not penetrate the enemy armor then the, um, the little dot or your little rectangle will be red if you've got a 50 50 percent chance of penetrating it will be orange and if you will definitely penetrate it will be green so that is quite useful because if it's red you don't have to bother shooting at the enemy target and if it's orange you should maybe also look for another target but if it's green you can just fire away now it's not that easy because uh, this armor penetration indicator doesn't take armor angling into account it only takes the raw armor thickness into account and i will be showing you how angling works just in a few seconds so that's up now i'm platooned up here and i'm not platooned up i'm in a training room with redwood forest and he's in his dicker max uh, we're watching this game from his perspective i'm in my black print and right here you can see me fooling around a bit but now the black print has got very very square armor and you can see that the Dicker Max has got no problems whatsoever just penetrating the frontal armor of the Black Print, although it's actually quite thick, because it is not angled. Now I angle my armor, and that maximizes the armor on it, and makes it really difficult for the Dicker Max to penetrate, and he cannot reliably penetrate me anymore. Now if he aims at my lower glacius, which is a weak spot on most tanks, he will penetrate most of the time but for example my upper glacius which was easily penetrable for him before I angled my armor now cannot be penetrated anymore and he also bounces off my side armor so as you see if you angle your armor you can really increase your survivability and that's something really important However, not in all tanks, angling your armor is a good idea. Because, for example, in the IS-7, which has got a pike nose, which is kind of pre-angled armor, there's no point in angling your armor because the tank's armor already is angled. So, yeah, it depends on the type of tank. But, for example, most German tanks and the Black Prince too, uh, for example, very, very square tanks with very, very many just straight not angled armor surfaces you always should make sure to angle those tanks and now i'll show you some data on how the angling of the armor will affect its effective armor thickness so this is the table i wanted to show you and what this here shows is how the angling of your armor will increase its effective thickness so if your armor is angled zero degrees so that means it's flat it will basically have no impact at all and just the raw armor thickness will count and there won't be any modifications to that if the shell hits an armor at an angle of 10 degrees the effective armor thickness will be increased by 1.54 percent so that means it will sum up to a total of 101.54 percent which is not that much more really if it hits a 20 degree angle, it will be increased by 6.42%. A 30 degree angle increases the effective armor to 115.47%. 
40 degree angle to 130.54 percent a 50 degree angle to 155.27 percent and a 60 degree angle to 200 percent that's really good because for example say the is6 i'm quite sure that the is6 gets 60 degrees of angling on its armor and what that means is although the is6 only has got 100 millimeters of frontal hull armor it actually is worth 200 millimeters because of the angling and that is really really nice if it's angled 70 degrees that goes up to 300 percent nearly that is a lot that means that for example if the is6 6's armor would be angled only 10 degrees more it would have 100 millimeters more effective armor thickness and here's something really interesting that many new players do not know or actually many experienced players don't know either and that is that if the armor angle is bigger than 70 degrees that will result in a ricochet and a ricochet basically means that no matter how high your penetration potential is you will not be able to penetrate an armor surface that's angled more than 70 degrees so you can always keep that in the back of your head because for example if you angle around a corner and you angle your frontal armor more than 70 degrees and try to trick the enemy in shooting and basically make him reload so that you can pop the corner then uh, and you angle your arm at 70 degrees or more round the corner then he will definitely bounce and then you've got the advantage on him there's one exception to this rule though and that is overmatching now there are two different kinds of overmatching which are partial and total overmatching and basically what that means is that some or all of the sloping is negated. Now if the calibre of a gun is twice as high as the armour thickness, so for example say the armour is 50mm strong and the calibre of a gun is 100mm or higher, then on impact some of the angling will be negated and that means that the effective armour thickness will be reduced too. If the calibre of the shell is three times as high as the thickness of the armour that it hits. So for example, if the armour thickness is 40mm and you hit it with a Russian 122mm gun, then it is totally overmatched. What that means is it doesn't matter how well it's angled, the shot will always, always go in. And that is something really important because for example if you're driving one of the French tanks, like for example the AMX 50B, and you angle your hull, a lot of tier 10 heavy tanks and tank destroyers will be able to overmatch your side armor and even if you only show them like one millimeter of your side armor they will be able to go through every single time it's the same deal with the amx 50 fosh 155 because that only gets 40 millimeters of side armor and that means that for example the russian 122 millimeter guns can overmatch it and go in every time if they get a shot at it and that is really important to keep in the back of your head if you're driving lightly armored vehicles and you're trying to angle them Yes, so I know this was a lot of dry theory and I'm sorry for that, but I hope you somewhat understood it and if you didn't, make sure to ask me in the comments and I'll try to explain it. Uh, I've still got one more gameplay clip lined up for you guys that will show you how to drive around the corner correctly and what can happen if you don't do it correctly. So stay tuned and I'll see you in a second. So here we go, this little clip is on fishing bay and it is supposed to show you how to drive around the corner correctly. Now, in this IS-4 here, um, I'm basically playing against an FV-215B, and I'm trying to poke this corner. Now, importantly, you, are, you should not drive around the corner like the way I'm doing right here. Um, yeah, like this. Because if you drive around like this to take a shot, then the enemy will be able to easily shoot into your uh, badly armoured side armour and go through every time so that is the wrong way to drive around the corner and you see many new people and new players do that and that is wrong now i'm going to show you how to correctly drive around the corner in for example the is4 as you can see i'm angling my armor so that he cannot get a shot at my side armor and uh, my frontal armor is still angled and i can get shots at him like this and he's bouncing off my armor every single time. Now that is one correct way to drive around the corner. 
So now I'm going to showcase a really, really good thing that you can do if an enemy drives around the corner in a very stupid way. So he gives you a side armor. You try to aim for his front drive wheel like I did right there. If you hit it, you manage to take off his tracks. That will work every time if you hit that front drive wheel flush. And as you can see, I am able to track him every time and he cannot repair his tracks in time to get away again. So I can track him again and again and again and he will just be pinned in place and I can basically whittle down his entire HP pool. So yeah, there you go. That's what you can do and that's why you should never drive around the corner like that. Especially if you have a tank with a rear mounted turret like the FE 215B183 because then you cannot even take shots at your enemy while you're doing so. So now uh, Redwood Forest here in his FE is going to showcase something called side scraping. What he's doing is he's angling around the corner so that I cannot hit his frontal armor and his side armor is at that big and uh, that large an angle that I cannot penetrate it. It's basically an auto bounce zone. Now I'll take off his track sometimes and that's why it's very important if you want to try this tactic that you've got a very good repair crew. And as you can see, because I waste my shots at firing at his side armor which is very well angled, he can then come out during my reload time, take a shot at me, go back into cover, trick me into shooting at the side armor again and then come back out. And this way, especially in tanks with a rear mounted turret, you can really troll amateur players and make them look really, really stupid. So now I'm going to show you something that's called face hugging. Now right here what you can see is if I face the FE215B front on, he can just easily take a shot at my lower glaciers and easily penetrate. And this tactic here is very important for tanks like the IS-4, the IS-7, the E-100 which have got very bad lower glaciers armor. Now as you can see by face hugging this tank here, the FE215B which has got very bad gun depression, he cannot anymore hit my hull and he can only shoot at my very well armored tar uh, turret. And I think my turret front is 250 millimeters strong or something like that. So he's basically got no chance of penetrating it. And I can now aim at his weak spot and try to penetrate him. And this way, he's basically got no chance of taking me out. Now, the IS-7, for example, is even more suitable for this task because he's got less weak spots on his turret. But still, the IS-4 performs very well while applying this tactic as well. So that's very useful, but not all tanks are good at it. Because, for example, if you face hug in an FE215B, you are not anymore able to hit the, uh, the hull of the enemy tank. Tanks with very, very good gun depression excel at this task because they can still hit the weaker hull armor of the enemies while they can only shoot at your turret. So, that was more or less it for this tutorial episode, and I hope I could show, especially the new players among you, some useful tactics to apply to maximize your survivability and efficiency of a battlefield. If you appreciated this video and it helped you out, make sure to rate it down below or even sub to my channel, I would appreciate that a lot. And I hope I see you out there on the battlefield on one of my next videos. For example, probably soon I'll be doing a tutorial on spotting and spotting range and view range and stuff like that. So stay tuned and I'll see you then. Bye bye.